Hi, my name is Holly Denany, and I am with Family Partners of Morrison, Sussex County, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our weekly Lunch and Learn um, educational event. Um, our goal of the Lunch and Learn is to let you have lunch with an expert. So we are okay if you're keeping your screen, your camera off as you're eating your lunch, uh, but we like to have a conversation with um, a local uh, resource that is available that helps us in our mission to uh, support families who have children with challenges. And um, this is a conversation. We have some slides, our guests, our, our expert today who's joining us is Helen O'Shea, who is with the uh, Special Child Health Services of Sussex County. Uh, she's an RN, she's a developmental therapist, she's a case manager, and she is here to tell us about the exciting um, services that she provides and um, I will encourage you as we are discussing the services, if you have a question, feel free to drop them in the chat. I know that Helen has allowed some time at the end for questions and answers. And I wanna remind you, you know, this is your lunch and learn. If there's a question you have, if there's a service that you've been having a hard time finding, you know, we've got our expert at our table. So don't be shy about dropping uh, questions in the chat because we want this resource to be for you, this hour to be for you. Um, so I'm also going to start off by saying, you know, I, um, I've been doing outreach for family partners for almost two years, and I always, I feel like I've met almost everybody in the community doing wonderful things, but I was at a um, presentation, I was part of a presentation for Project Self-Sufficiency uh, a few months back, and I heard Helen speak about her organization and what she, she does, and I was so eager to bring her um, to uh, this event, because Helen, if I recall, I think you might have mentioned about finding um, dentists who may specialize um, in children who are on the spectrum, who, who may be uh, very uncomfortable in that scenario. And I thought to myself, what a fabulous uh, resource. So you really, you hooked me and I wanted to know more. So folks are here to hear about you. So Helen O'Shea, welcome to Lunch and Learn. And please, please tell us about the wonderful things at Special Child, uh, Child Health Services. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with everybody today. Um, we're very, very, very pleased to be here. Um, so I'll just get right started. We're um, with Special Child Health Services. We're here in Sussex County. Um, every county has a Special Child Health Services, and we help children birth to 20, through their 21st birthday um, and their families. So I'm, I just have a little slide to show you um, the purpose of Special Child Health Services. Uh, New Jersey has made a commitment to assist families for caring for children with complex long-term medical and developmental needs. Um, so our funding sources um, on the state level, we're uh, funded by New Jersey Department of Health. Uh, we have a grant. Every year we renew that grant. And um, here in the county, we are supported by our county commissioners. We're housed over in the Public Health Nursing Building, 201 Woodsworth Road, um, over in uh, Hamburg. Um, and so who are case managers? So case managers could be nurses or social workers um, that work with the families to assist them with whatever needs they have. In Sussex, we have um, three part-time registered nurses. Uh, that's who we presently have on our staff. So um, we are very blessed to have myself Helen Ann Keenan and um, Ann Sullivan, all three RNs. So what is case management? Case management is assessment of family's needs, um, the child's needs. We make a plan of care. Uh, we talk about resources. We have referrals. We monitor the progress of the, the family and the child, and we're informational resource. So what's included in our assessment? So we see what, what the family needs. What every single time we make a call, it's individualized. So, you know, diagnoses could have some of the same entities and um, diagnoses such as autism, there's a spectrum. So things, you could have the same diagnosis, but be on different ends of the spectrum. So we really customize every single call that we make to the family and the family's needs. And every time we call, it may be a different situation. You know, this time I call you, you may have a, a school thing that you're worried about. This next time I call you, you may be interested in finding out social stuff. So it just depends on what's going on with your family at the time of my call. And of course, you can call us anytime. Helen, I'm going to 
to jump in because I thought something interesting that you shared with me was sometimes when, when parents call you, they're not even sure what to ask for, right? I mean, there's, there's an educational piece in what you do that helps them understand even what options are. Is that correct? That's right. So what we do is, I mean, I'll get ahead a little bit, but what we do is once we do get a referral, so we can get a referral from many different places. We, um, there's a, a mandatory birth and autism registry. So um, the autism registry, you, you will be registered. Some people choose to be registered anonymously. But if, you're chose, if you choose to be registered anonymously, then we don't get your name. But if we do get your name, then we make the connection. So it could be from an early intervention referral. Um, and the, and the, the fact that I um, did early intervention for 18 years, you know, I'm very familiar with those case managers. So it's really been a, a very nice opportunity for us to be able to share um, children that when they age out of early intervention, they can come to us. Um, so what will happen is, is that with the birth and registry, autism registry, we'll get your name. It could be from school. It could be a parent. The nice thing is, is that anybody can call. We can set up a chart if that's what you wish, as long as you have some kind of need. Um, and I do need to say that it is at no cost. So that's, that's a very important part. of that's an, that's an important part. And Helen, I also want to touch on, you know, you were saying if, if parents want to, because it's not mandatory that you're on the list, but what we find with our families, and I don't know if you see the same thing, but sometimes parents are hesitant because they don't want a label, but really you should open yourself up to what resources may be available. I mean, they're not, if they share the information and you call, they can decline anything, but would you recommend that they do that just so they can hear from you about what resources or options? Um, not necessarily that, that okay. once, because once, once, well, once I make that call to you, I've already got you. So, and you've got me. So we, we're a partnership already. Our, um, our relationships vary. We can have a relationship where I call you once I assist you with whatever you need and, and we're good until maybe something else comes up. We can have a relationship where you're on our, our active caseload, or I'm going to, to reach out to you. Uh, twice uh, during the year on the phone and you can reach out to me whenever you want. We'll just reach out for an update. We have some times where um, we talk to people and then when they're going through transition times, uh, it's important for them to reach out to us. They don't necessarily need our assistance on, on a six month basis, although it's very nice to get an update and they're happy to talk to us and we'll go back and forth. It just depends. We are open to whatever your family needs. Again individualized. So it, it just depends. We do have an ongoing um, email resource uh, that we send out. So whatever comes across my desk in terms of um, anything that's going on, if it's, if it's something locally, if it's something bigger, I will send it out to my email list. We probably have about 350 people on our email list. And um, sometimes it'll pertain to the person that I'm sending it to, but it's, it's, a, it's a blast. So sometimes I'll say in the email, you know what, maybe somebody in home might need this because again, it takes a village, right? We're all in, in this together and we wanna help everybody the absolute best way we can. And I may have heard something today and I can share it with you and you may have heard something and share it with me. So it'll, it'll just depend. Great, so thank you. that's how it works. So we, once we get the referral, we call every single person we get a referral for. Um, if we do not get that person, we will then go ahead and send a contact letter. And in that letter, we will um, provide some preliminary information. We'll provide uh, our brochure. Of course, if the child is under three, we'll give them the early intervention brochure. Um, and then, you know, just some general information. And then hopefully they will give us a call back. So we go from there. So if we are um, on an ongoing basis um, and we're going to be reaching out to you, there's certain categories that we talk about. So we talk about healthcare. We want to know, um, you know, do you have a pediatrician? Are your immunizations up to date? If you have a certain diagnosis, have you had the opportunity to get to a develop to the uh, pediatrician for that diagnosis? Have you seen a developmental pediatrician yet? Because um, many times 
the wait is very long for a developmental pediatrician. So we'll say, perhaps you wanna get on a, a wait list. Maybe you wanna get on a cancellation list. So we just always are giving suggestions as to um, how we can make things easier. Um, if let's say we got a birth registry and the child had um, a little kidney thing at birth. So we'll say, did you, get to, did you get to go to see the nephrologist? How did that go? You know, and then for that person, that call may end there. So let's say we get a baby, right? It has, um, the, the, the child has a kidney issue and we talk to them about going to the, see the nephrologist. We make sure that they have their insurance. We make sure that they're set up with whatever they need. We make sure we tell them about early intervention because you're under three, okay? And you have our information. If you need me, you'll let me know. So I send out an email. I make sure you have, make sure you have my contact information and then you'll come back to me if and, and when you need me. So it, it'll just depend. Um, all right, so when, if, like I said, if we have five carriers, so we, we talk about um, dental. So oftentimes uh, children that, and all children, you know, going to the dentist could be difficult, but if you have a sensory thing, um, if you're hypersensitive, if you feel things differently, that may be a difficult situation. Some children have a very difficult time brushing their teeth. Um, I, you know, I hear it a lot. Moms will say it's, it's very difficult. I can maybe get in their mouth. You know, forget them brushing them. If I can get in, it's a big deal. So we have a list of dentists, um, pediatric dentists, special needs dentists. So what I've done is, is um, depending on, of course, on your insurance, right? So um, the SMILES program, um, that's for New Jersey Family Care. So what I did with them was I went on um, Autism Speaks and I cross-referenced special needs dentists with the SMILES dentists and I put those together. And so now we have not just the SMILES, but we have the special needs. So it's sometimes just a little thinking about it. What we'll send to, when we're preparing for the dentist is um, a social story. So social stories are just little snippets of, a, of what's going to go on and we can use them for anything. Um, and so we'll send a social story preparing for the dentist. And- I love that. So that's almost like what to expect. Exactly. Wow. So okay. We'll send that ahead of time. We'll say to the mom, you know, or the dad, whoever's caregiver is, um, read this, you know, ahead of time. If you read it every day, then when the day comes, we sort of have that anxiety should be a little bit less and we, it's expected, right? Because things that are unexpected are difficult. So that's just a little thing. And we can do that. We do that for potty training. We do that for, um, the dentist, we do that for going to, uh, going on a trip. We could send out a social story for um, you're going to somebody's house again because let's say it's it's not COVID and it's the holidays, right? So if I say to you, this is a social piece, and I'm getting a little off topic, but if I say to you, you know, um, somebody says to me, I'm going to to my mother's house, and I know there's going to be a lot of people there, you know, and and that's very anxiety provoking for us. So suggestions, get there first. You'll be the greeter. We'll read this story as what to expect. Have a safe space that if you, if it's all too much, that you can, you can go ahead and, and, and excuse yourself for a little bit and just relax and, and get yourself together again. So it, it'll just all depend on, on what's going on. Um, Helen, I love that. I don't think you realize you're saying you're off topic, but that's so relevant to our, our caregivers to know that there are ways to prepare, right? There's ways to empower not only the caregiver, but the youth also, right? I think that's Absolutely. a wonderful example. Good. All right. And then developmentally, when we call people, we'll find out, you know, is your child potty trained? Because that's a very big issue. Um, a lot of our children are a little bit, they, they're a little bit later in getting potty trained. Um, you know, we have a social story for potty training. We have, um, and so another thing that we do is we'll use resources. Now, the resources may be from Autism Speaks. It could be from Autism New Jersey. It could, it could say autism on it. And we make sure that we explain to our families, 
just because this resource is from that place, we are not saying your child is autistic. We are using a resource from that because just how we said the spectrum is, is very big, we can cross-reference a lot of good information because it's good information for everybody, you know? Um, so we'll send out a little potty training um, suggestion and, you know, that's, that's helpful to, to parents. Um, so that the, a potty training is a big one. If, if your child is older, what's going on with the diapers? Who's paying for those diapers? Does your insurance pay for diapers? You know, after a certain age, insurance will kick in if you have a prescription. Not all insurances, but they can kick in. So it's just, again, something to bring to somebody's um, knowledge so that you'll know that there is another, another thing that we can discuss. Um, and as I was saying before, what we, what we really work on um, is depending on our transition. So we're always, children and their families are, are constantly transitioning, like every family, right? So a child is leaving or getting into early intervention, right? So we are with them until they get into early intervention. And then in early intervention, they do have case managers. Then when they leave early intervention, if they want to come back, they can come back getting ready for preschool, ready, getting ready for kindergarten, getting ready for middle school, high school, adulthood. So we're constantly thinking about what are we going to do to prepare the children and families to be as independent as they can be. Because, right, that's our ultimate goal. We want people to be <laughs> as independent as they possibly can be. And, you know, it's the nursing part of us that we're starting discharge on admission. You know, we're constantly... <laughs> and, for some people, they're interested in a little bit of information. They say, I can deal with the here and now or next week or next month or a little bit in advance. Some people want to know a lot of stuff in, in advance. So again, everything is customized right, to what, what you need. And your needs may change. The next time I call you, you may say, well, I really need to know more. And this time I, I wasn't ready to hear it then, but I am ready to hear it now. And we do do, 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 try to make sure that we are heard um, at some point. Sometimes, you know, we'll send out information and we'll call and somebody will say, I never heard that. And I'm like, we talked about it last time, but we'll continue to keep trying, right? Because maybe you just weren't ready to hear my information at that point. <laughs> Can be the over overwhelming though, right, Helen? I mean, a lot of times caregivers are so... Uh, plussed out with the caregiving that they're not able to. That's, that's kind of a role that we have too at Family Partners is to help make sure that they do realize what resources are available. Exactly. And, and, and to be mindful that sometimes people aren't ready for it. And sometimes, and, and when they are, we'll be here for you. The next thing we talk about is education. Um, does your child have an IEP or a 504? What plan do they have? Um, you know, are they going to extended school year? Um, in the beginning, are they in the, did they get into the preschool? We um, work with very well with the statewide parent advocacy network. They're extremely, um, you know, uh, uh, helpful to us. They've, they've been really um, helpful to us uh, in helping the children um, and the parents get ready for meetings. And, you know, again, we know it's a lot for parents, but we want to make sure that the parent is as ready as they possibly can be to get to that meeting, right? When, you, when you're going to your IEP meeting, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's very um, daunting at some times because you're there and you know there's a panel of people and it's your, it's your child. So we have a resource um, on um, the Ark of New Jersey. They have what we call, they have go bags. So these little go bags are for any, anything you could imaginably think about. It's one, there's one for guardianship. There's one for early intervention. There's one for transition. There's one. So what we, when we comes to education, we say there's an IEP go bag. So prepare yourself for the meeting. Bring a picture of your child to the meeting. We want you, we want everybody at the meeting to know this is my baby. This is who we're talking about, right? This is, I want 
And we all should want for the best for my child, for our child, because this is our community. Um, so how to prepare for your IEP meeting. And there is so much information in there. And each bag will have a ton of information about whatever the topic is. So there'll be frequently asked questions. There'll be, um, you know, if, if you are um, new to the game and you're requesting an evaluation, there is, um, I know SPAN has that, is a, a sample letter to send. Because even sending a letter is, could be a lot. Are these, Helen, are these go bags available to just anyone who wants to call up ARC or is there a process for that? I've, I've never heard of those either. That's a great resource. Yeah, so all you'll do is, let me let me show you, um, let me go down here and I will, because of course we got to, I, once, once I get to, talking, you know, it's all, uh, all bets. You're dropping off. some great information, Helen, keep talking. All right, let me see if I can find my go bags. Let me just see where that is, Stan. That. Never have too much information, and I have, you've already uh, some of the things that you're sharing about um, even the ARC, and I will make sure listeners, um, you know, we do follow up for these. I will make sure that these websites are included and any yes. information no. um, on uh, uh, the ARC with the go bags, I will make sure that we include. Here we go. So I'm going to bring it up right now. And you guys, can you see it? Yep, we can, yes. Oh. New York of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you go down, you'll see, here it is, your go bag. Okay. And right in here is uh, IEP go bag. So you're going to go on here. And then you, what you need to prepare. So it's going to tell you what to do before the meeting, the guide, wow. the for hints, asking questions, what your rights are. This is really a virtual resource. Obviously, we're talking a virtual thing. This is an amazing thing. I just got a comment from a participant in all caps, great information. <laughs> so thank you, Helen. <laughs> and wow, see, look at that. So many go bags, right? It just depends on, on what you what resource you're looking for. So that's that's an educational thing. Um, and so we are always preparing. We want to make sure that children and families know that. Um, if they qualify, they can stay in school until they're 21. And the 18 to 21 is, is um, sometimes difficult because um, children want to graduate, right? They, they don't, they want it, they want to walk. You can walk, but you cannot accept a, a diploma. So once you accept your diploma, you've accepted it. So if you, if you need to, and you're, it's the right fit for you, it's not for everybody, right? So it's going to depend. You're going to speak with your child study team. You, as, as always, you're going to be a big part of what's going on. It's really important for people to know what's in their IEP, right? So if, if my child is, is getting a service, if my child is getting speech therapy, and I don't know what they're working on, right? How am I going to do that at home? I'm, I'm not going to be able to. But if I do know, now I have power. Now I know what we can do because what you're going to do at school, I'm going to follow through with, right, at home. And now my child is getting therapy, just like the early intervention model, right? My child is getting therapy every day. And not that you wouldn't be giving therapy, not that you wouldn't be talking to them, but you could hone in on certain things, whatever whatever it is that they're working on. And, and again, it's power. And it's not to make somebody feel bad if you don't know. It's just important if you do know. It's, it's really a good asset, you know, to, to know and have some control of what is, what is, what do they say in there? What, what am I supposed to be expecting? Um, you know, people will say, I, I don't know, I'm, the communication is lacking. So what I have suggested in the past, and, and I don't know if anybody is um, appreciative of this suggestion or not, the schools or whatever, because you know I have a daughter who is an occupational therapist. And when, when um, I am like, well, of course they can tell you, you know, but she's like, mom, it's, the school is, is it's very structured and it's a very short amount of time. So I said, okay, so maybe you can write in your IEP meeting that you're going to take five minutes 
from the end of your session because you, you're not going to get more time in your session. You're going to take five minutes from your session and you're going to write what you did so I know and I can follow up at home. Again, a discussion, not set in gold. It, you know, it's just it's not set in stone, just, just a suggestion. But I think with the suggestions help because oftentimes, like you said, people don't even think about it until after the fact. And clearly these are helpful things to know before you go in, right? And it doesn't have yes. to be perfect, but it's kind of helpful to have an, an understanding. I like that's very much like your social stories. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and again, you know, it's many, many years of doing this that, you know, that you learn all these things. Um, all right, so that's some of the, uh, and, then, and then also people need to know too that once you do send that letter, there's a time frame, right? So there's a specific time frame that needs to be followed in order to, um, you know, in order to keep in compliance. So that, that's an important piece. Um, and then another thing we'll talk about is um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, ABA therapy, all these different um, therapies that children get in school and sometimes they get privately. So again, what's going on so that we can do follow through? You know, is, is your child able to express their wants and needs? Are they, and, and, it, and it, that's not always verbally. Sometimes they can just bring you to what they need you to show. Maybe it'll be a picture board. Maybe it'll be, you know, some other method of expressing the wants and needs, but with being able to express your wants and needs, frustration will decrease, right? And so we want to make sure that, that children are, are getting the services that they need to get. Um, the other thing we'll talk about is the social aspect. Uh, social aspects in terms of what's going, what's going on in the area, where are there um, things for us to do? We work with... Uh, give out information about Biondo. It's, it's um, camp, uh, horseback riding camp. Um, we can give information about um, Macaroni Kid. We work very well with Danielle. She's very, very good. And um, of, of getting comp compiling all information that's activities that are going around town. Um, and so that may be not for, for everybody. That may not be, there's a special needs section that they have in the macaroni kid that may be helpful um like i'm not I, familiar with macaroni kid and by the way we're still on the uh, go bag uh screen i don't know if that's okay. the one yep. you want to okay that's fine what that's is that what is macaroni um kid i haven't heard macaroni of that Macaroni kid it's so she, there's this lady danielle and she um compiles all information and um she sends it out in an email and as i get that then i'll send that resource out to people but you can go on and join the macaroni kid and it'll be whatever is going around in uh, sussex county whatever, oh wow what is it here okay. in sussex. awesome all right so let us see what else we have okay so that's and that's just um an idea a suggestion for um socialization um what about support groups there's mom to mom support group there's um depending on what you you know uh, there's parents anonymous it, it just depends on again whatever your needs are if you're interested in getting you know joining a support group sometimes people are not really that interested in that they say oh, i have my network already i'm good but if you need it we, we can suggest some things for you well, hopefully we're on your list, Helen. We have a lot of support list, groups too. Way to go. When, you, when you're on the list, you're golden. I have people that are on the list that are aged out ages ago. And I say, you want to come off? And they're like, no, we stay on. Um, <laughs> then we talk about insurance. Do you have insurance, right? What um, We want to make sure that everybody has insurance. We're, we're pretty good here in Sussex, I have to say. Um, but just making sure that insurance. And, and so another thing that I have learned um, through my own insurance is that sometimes um, there are navigators. So sometimes you can't um, get the, the services that you want, but some insurance have autism navigators and they can perhaps, but again, you have to know about it to ask about it. Well, say more about that, Helen. What, what would a, a nav an autism navigator do or be? They may, they may be able to assist you getting the services that you need. Okay. Much like, much like an advocate, you know, but some insurances do have them now. Okay. So that's just another thing. 
Um, another thing we have is the, um, let me do this one, the Catastrophic Illness and Children Relief Fund. Uh, do you see that? Yes. Okay. So the Catastrophic Illness and Re uh, Children and Relief Fund, it's a, it's a daunting name for a fund, but this fund is wonderful. And we have been able to assist families um, here in Sussex County, as all over New Jersey. Um, if you have medical bills that are more than 10% of your first $100,000 of income and 15% after the first 100. So if you live in New Jersey um, and you hear if you, if you have bills that exceed 10% of that income and any income over 100,000 will be 15. So if your bills are not covered by um, your insurance, let's say um, you, you, your child needed surgery, right? They needed surgery and there were no providers in, in New Jersey. You have to travel. You have to travel and you have to stay over. So you have to go through your insurance. You have a copay, whatever you're gonna have. If you have bills that amount to more than 10% of, of the first 100 and 15 after that, you can apply for the Catastrophic Illness and Children Relief Fund. Um, so people think that sometimes they think because their income is high that they will not qualify. That's not true, as long as you meet the, those 10 and 15% parameters. Now, can do we promise people they're getting money? No, we never do that because we don't know. You have to apply. It's a fund, so you pay for your inf you pay for your stuff. You apply, and if you if you are um, granted the money, then then we'll find that out and you'll get it. It's a, another um, way for us to sometimes meet uh, people through uh, and give them case manager services. We want to make sure that you have insurance, right? Because if you have insurance, hopefully you're not going to need this fund. Hopefully your deductible or your whatever is not going to be in this area. Um, to be perfectly honest, like sometimes I'll see people, I'm like, oh, you ha I have to tell you about the catastrophic illness because it, it's really a great, great fund. Um, so that's that's another thing. We, give, we send that to every family just to find out about it. Again, put it in your pocket. You know, Hopefully you'll never need it. But if you did, it's here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you some of the um, book, the things that we have, the resources. So I do think that sometimes um, resources are out there and they're talked about, but until you actually experience them, it, they're a little foreign. So for early intervention, um, this is what their resource looks like. So in here, it'll tell us um, developmental milestones for each age. A cute little booklet tells you everything and a number to call if you if you should need uh, help. If, and if you have a question, call. They'll they'll help you. You call the eight 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 number. You leave a message and they'll get back to you. Depending on what your concern is, that that'll depend on what kind of therapist they send out to do an evaluation. In order to um, qualify for early intervention, you need to be twenty five percent delayed in two areas or thirty three percent delayed in one area. You do not have to have a diagnosis. You have to just be 25% in two or 33% in one. So that's the early intervention one. Um, this is our span. So span has so many resources. They're, they're terrific. They have a lot of um, learning resources, um, how, how we're going to be able to um, help all different types of families. Um, so they have, they have a tremendous amount. So it just depends on what you're, what you're looking for. They can um, help with school issues and just training. There's a lot of this training and, and all that kind of stuff also. Um, perform care. Perform care is another one that we refer to a lot. Um, so to perform care, for those of, that don't know, has two sides. Okay, so perform care has a behavioral health side. So if your child is in crisis, if your family is in crisis, you can call perform care and they are there 24 hours a day. So you can call the perform care line and they will send somebody out to your home. 
okay? Um, they, they will send somebody right out to your home. That's the, that's the behavioral health side. Then there's the developmental disability side. So for the developmental disability side, there's an application. So you fill out that application, and if you qualify for their services, they can assist you with respite care. Um, so we have three different kinds of respite care. There's um, self-hired respite care, where you choose the person that you want to um, care for your child. There's agency hired respite care, which right now is a little bit on you know, the down low because of COVID. And there's also programs at SPAR. So there's three, whatever you choose to do. So let's say for um, a Saturday morning, you can bring your child to a respite program um, at SCAR. Uh, so that, that's just three different types of things. They can also help you with camp, um, paying for camp. Now, it's a process. You're going to do your application. It takes time. We're not going to be looking for camp, you know, if the application isn't started, I'm not getting assistance with camp. If I, if I started the application in May, I'm not getting assistance for camp and it, it's just not happening. It, you know, it through perform care. So- Meaning you need to give it more time, Helen? Is that what you mean? You need to start early? It's a process. It's, it is right. a process. Right, and for those who don't know, I'm assuming everybody on the call knows, but I will state the obvious in that folks who receive services through our organization, Family Partners of Morris and Sussex County, um, in order to receive assistance from our family support partners who will work directly with uh, parents, um, they need to be coming through uh, Perform Care. However, we offer many things like today's educational workshop, like our support groups, like our fantastic youth partnership program. Um, our, all of those resources are available to folks who, in, in, in the general public, so you don't have to be through Perform Care, but that is the agency that refers um, to us. Um, yes. Just wanted to throw that in. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and we can also, like you said, Helen, it's, it's a process and I would urge anyone who, um, if you aren't already involved in performing care and think you may be eligible, that we can also, we have a warm line at our agency and we can chat with you about, and I'm sure Helen, you could have the same conversation about kind of sort of what you need to do to get the ball rolling because it does take some time. Um, and there's certain ways that you need to um, present what, make sure you're presenting a clear picture of what your challenges are. Am I right, Helen? Don't sugarcoat it. Yes, no, 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 there is no sugar corn. So, and, and, and that's difficult. It, we, we understand that that's difficult. You know, when, when you are looking at something and, and you're trying to figure out, like if, if you said, can your child independently feed themselves? Okay, my child can pick up a sandwich and, and eat it, but maybe my child needs help cutting it. You know, maybe there, there are steps. Everything um, takes time and, 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 and there's steps to be taken in order to answer that question. So we try to say, if you were not there, would your child be able to complete that task? You know, my child can wash, his, wash their hair or my child can take a shower or, you know, yes, but we have to get there. We have to get to the shower, to the independence of that. Um, so it, it'll just, you know, depend. Now, also, in the interest of time, because I know I'm yapping a lot, but on this, right in, if you go on Perform Care website, this little uh, snippet here will tell you exactly about that. Um, it'll tell you all about what you have to do in order to uh, get on Perform Care. We also, um, I have to give a shout out to Dale Flager at Spark. She um, helps our families with their application should they need it. So I'll, uh, when I give them the perform care information, I'll also give them Dale's number <laughs> because she's wonderful with helping with those applications. I mean, we can help too, but Dale, you know, Dale has been down the road and she knows exactly what to tell people to do. And she'll tell you, it is a daunting task but if you cut one or two hours out of, the, of a day, I, I can help you and walk you through it. And even on here, when, when you go to look on here, it'll tell you, um, there'll be the frequently asked questions. There'll be how to prepare for your application, what you need in order to do that application. You know, you need documentation from your doctor. So when you go to fill out that application, you wanna know 
what are all the supplies I need before, before I get started with this? So that's, that's another biggie that we use. Um, social security, okay. So there's another issue, we have social security. So sometimes people think that if they have a diagnosis, they automatically um, will qualify for social security. It's, it, that is not the way it is, oh, I'm sorry. Um, that is just not the way it is. It is income-based, okay? So you need to have the diagnosis and to meet the um, income qualifications. Now, until you're 18. At 18, you no longer go by your parents' income, you go by your income. Another agency that we have worked with is Dawn, the Center for Independent Living. So Dawn um, holds the grant for early intervention here in Sussex County. Um, Dawn has, this is the CARES Act that's up there now um, with, through the pandemic, people that have had um, difficulty with having to stay home and maybe not working, um, caring for their child, that has special needs, um, any, any child, but Dawn will assist people with that um, CARES Act uh, application. That will be, I wanna say that's a little bit longer, not much longer. So if you, if you fit in that category and um, you need assistance at, with the CARES Act, you can contact them and, and they will assist you with the application. I actually can send um, the CARES Act brochure, um, Holly, to you. Fabulous. Okay, great. I have that information. Uh, again, I can send all this information. And, and when anybody comes to the PowerPoint, all you have to do is click in. I thought that was qu quite good. All you have to do is click That's great. In. And we can, are you okay with us sharing your PowerPoint? Yeah. You have a lot of resources in there. Are you okay with us doing that? That's fine. Everything here okay. is is everything that's- uh, That's wonderful. I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of oohs and ahs and wow, this is great information. We wanna make sure that we can follow up afterwards, Helen. So that's absolutely, terrific. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Um, we recently have um, hooked, uh, been partnered with Autism New Jersey. Um, so that's going to be part of Special Child, which is really a wonderful thing. Um, again, very many, uh, very many resources um, there are, there are autism grants, um, that you can apply for. Uh, we have had some assistance. Actually, this was through the, um, Arc of New Jersey. Children, some, a few of our people were able to get iPads, um, at the start of the pandemic through some of their grants. Um, it's all, it's, you know, it's a lot of, and I know it's, it's a lot of information. It's taken me a long, long time to get all this information, but I'm, more than happy to share it with anybody. And, and your point, I mean, Helen, I think your point is just to keep to ask questions and explain your scenario because these things come to you and come to others. And we had Autism New Jersey, as an example, speak uh, a little while back, and I was really floored by the resources they have. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, if you have questions, like that's another organization, Helen, that you can call and they will, they will field your questions and make recommendations. I mean, it really, um, the level of response and um, attention to your scenario is really remarkable. Yes, yes, it's, they, they, they are phenomenal. They, they really are. Um, Project Self-Sufficiency is another agency that we, um, like um, Holly had said, that we uh, spoken at. Um, and this is the newsletter for May and June, but if you go on the Project Self-Sufficiency uh, website, you can print out their, um, every, but I think it's every two months there. So now the July and August one will be up. Um, and I really like to be able to go on this newsletter because everything they offer is a little snippet in there on it. And then if you want more information, you can go ahead and learn more about it. But there are so many, so many things that are being offered. Um, so Again, you can learn just a little bit. And if you think it's something that would pertain to your family, you can go ahead and learn some more about that. Um, let's see what else I have to tell you. Oh, I 
think I told you all. While, while you're looking, can I ask you a question? If oh, folks want to get on your email list, how would they do that? So what will happen is, is that you, you can just sign, you can just send me an email um, okay. under this PowerPoint. Oh, what happened to my PowerPoint list then? And yeah, we'll make sure we share uh, your contact information. And, and while you're looking for your PowerPoint, another question I have for you is like other, I, you said there, I wanna find if there are other Helen O'Shea's out there in other counties, how would I find those agencies? Is that a website kind of thing, a government website? Or you said every county has a, yes. an organization like you? Yes, so if you go on New Jersey Department of Health and you put in special child health services, depending on where you live, each county um, special child health services will come up. That's fabulous. I know we, we service both Morris and Sussex County and I know there are folks on the call from other areas. Um, so that's that's terrific to know. I don't know if they can measure up to Helen O'Shea because you were quite the, uh, <laughs> quite the resource. You've got a, a real big bag of goodies and also things like the uh, macaroni, um, the macaroni kid, do you know if that is beyond Sussex County or is that unique to Sussex County? Well, the one that we have, it, it probably it might, it might be like uh, Jefferson, that type of thing, I believe. Okay. But I'm sure that each area has one. Okay, that's great. That's good to know. Oh my goodness. Helen yes. O'Shea, did you come, you came loaded with information and resources. Let me just, okay, so uh, at the end of my, thank you, sweetie, at the end of, let me, just get over here at, at the very end, you sh will see, doo -doo. oh, there we are. Um, at the very end, there's, there's my name and the other nurses that work with me and um, our emails. So I think I'm seeing the front, we're seeing the first page, Helen. Seeing, Stephanie, they're seeing this first page. Not this and no worries, folks, because like I said, Helen has been kind enough to let me, I will send out the slides that you'll be able to access um, everything that, that she shared as far as the links. And I believe if, if I understood you correctly, Helen, you should be able to click the links and it will take you to the website. Yes, it'll take you right to the website. And if not, obviously you can, you can just enter the websites. There you go. There's your contact information, which Perfect. is wonderful. Um, Helen, what's the, if there's anything that you, that you wish most people knew, like what's, what's the most common misunderstanding of people who you deal with as far as, is there one thing, um, that you wish parents knew or caregivers knew? Well, I, I think that we, um, I think it's important for them to know that we're in it together, that we are very, very happy to uh, use our experience and to help anybody that needs it along the way. Um, and that everybody um, has so much to offer, right? Just because you can't speak doesn't mean you don't have a lot to offer. Um, everybody sees things a little bit differently, right? And so uh, I think we have to hone in on, 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 on what's good. That's fabulous. Helen, I can't thank you enough for all of these um, amazing resources. And I'm just going to throw it out to our participants if anybody has um, any questions. And I, I would say anything that Helen didn't cover. However, I think you hit the full gamut. And as Helen said, you know, I really think it, it never ceases to amaze me the resources that are out there that we may not first know about. For instance, um, you know, our family support partners work really hard to meet the needs of um, the caregiver, caregivers if we can. And for instance, if there's a mom who's struggling with cancer, I mean, there's, you know, there are cleaners who volunteer or who offer services once a month to help moms who are going through treatments for cancer, you know, with just house care uh, matters. And it's like, who would ever think that that's something that's out there? I think you just don't know until you start um, talking to somebody like Helen or talking to somebody um, like uh, family partners to try to understand, right, what your needs are. And we, we really do our best to, we work together, right, Helen, to try to help these families connect to the right resources. Yes, absolutely. Sussex County, I, I, I really have to say that the, the partnerships here in Sussex are really amazing. You know, we, we have our struggles, right? We have some struggles with transportation. We have, you know, because of where we live and, and things sometimes it's not always easy to get services here because, you know, it, it, it's uh, transportation and, and time to, for, for therapists to get from place to place or nurses to get from place to place is hard, you know? Um, but there, 
the, the working together is uh, pretty amazing, I think. It is. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I have gotten so many wonderful presentations, so many great resources. Thank you so much, Helen. Lots of lots of love in the chat. So, um, Helen, I want to thank you for your time today and also for the folks on the call. We know you're busy. We know there's a million other things you could be doing, but we really appreciate you spending time with us today and learning about the wonderful, wonderful things that are available through um, this organization. And I will make sure that we know that the special child health services are available in other counties as well. I mean, Helen, you've really opened our eyes up to um, an organization like this that can help us figure out what else is in that immediate area because every family scenario is different, every challenge is different and geography plays a part. Like you said, transportation is a bigger problem in some areas than it is in others. But um, I will be following up with a copy of the video of this presentation. Um, please feel free to share it with a friend, a coworker, a colleague. That's that's the reason we have uh, video record them. We also make these available on our YouTube channel, which if you haven't checked that out yet, please do. We have a, a whole bunch, probably upwards of 40 um, presentations on really important topics and organizations just like Helen's. Uh, so please check that out. And we will be sending out a copy of um, Helen's PowerPoint. So you will see all the fabulous phone numbers and resources and links that um, Helen put together for us today, which was just um, a really terrific uh, opportunity. So um, I'm gonna remind everybody that Family Partners, we're here every week, Lunch and Learn, noon on Thursdays. And we also have support groups. Tuesday night, we have a Spanish support group for caregivers. Wednesday night, Hero Huddle for Dads. Thursday nights, Mom Squad for uh, caregivers. And Friday, we have Youth Partnership, which I'm very excited that this summer, we are doing in-person meetings, Arts in the Park. We're doing some fun stuff. So if you don't already have that information, please, please reach out and we'll make sure that you get it. And um, I'm just gonna encourage uh, everyone to, as Helen said, I'm gonna quote you, Helen, we're all in this together, right? We, we are here to help. There are so many organizations in Sussex and in Morris County that really seek to serve families. Um, we value uh, families. We know it's hard in the best of circumstances, but together uh, we are able to move mountains and do great things. So thank you for joining us. Family Partners Lunch and Learn, and I hope to see everybody again soon. Helen, you rock. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.